So this question. Actually, before we do this, before the pandemic, <coughs> we were about to ask you to teach us TikTok. To TikTok. <laughs> Funny. So we're here with singer slash songwriter, poor nameless boy. What were some of your musical inspirations growing up? Oh, my my dad was a he was a road entertainer before I was born. Like he used to go on the road and he would sing in hotels and stuff like six nights a week. So um, one of the biggest things that my dad had to do was he had to learn a crazy amount of songs. And so my dad loved to just play the oldie stations and stuff. And so any kind of pop music from the 50s, 60s, 70s, I grew up listening to that stuff. Cool. A lot of Motown, a lot of like shifting, a lot of, yeah, it was fun. What was the first instrument you learned to play? Um, trying to think, well, I mean, there were a bunch of stuff that I, I tried to play, but the first one I think was the tenor saxophone. When I was in grade five, they tried to get me to play the, the clarinet and I said no. <laughs> and then, and then they were like, "Well, with the tenor saxophone," and I said, "Yeah." <laughs> I said, "Of course." So he's an alto, actually. I'm nice. A, he is a euphonium. I used to be a trumpet, but I was like, I the teacher was like, "Hey, you're too low for trumpet," and I'm just like, "Here, <laughs> hey, I." Yeah, I I uh, I started playing the the saxophone, and then I realized later on that. The tenor saxophone in the concert band is the one that plays all the whole notes, and the alto saxophone is the one that gets to go like. Yeah. Like I was all jealous. So, what instrument that you tried to learn would make people very scared if you tried to play? Oh, probably the drums. <laughs> uh, I, I tried to play drums for a little while. Uh, I was one of those people that always just like tap it on everything, but I had a really hard time with the whole feet and the hands thing. You know what I mean? Trying to get the feet to do one thing while the hands are doing the other. I have a hard enough time singing my own lyrics when I'm trying to play, so. Yeah, I'm constantly tapping on things. I actually literally, I ha I usually, when I'm playing, I'm just like. When I'm, yeah, I, I'm the same way. I'm just constantly tapping on things. It's kind of like my fidget. Oh, um, yeah. how was it like? I get that. Collaborate with Vins on the song Damage. Uh, they, that was kind of crazy. It was something that kind of came out of the blue. I was already going to be touring in Germany and Denmark and other places. And they kind of just hooked up this opportunity. They said, there's this, there's this guy in uh, that wants to kind of, he wants some lyrics and some stuff. And he really likes your voice. He described it as, I want something that's country, but not too country. And he felt like my voice was in that realm. So, and he liked my songwriting. So he said, so why don't you come to the studio here? Uh, he wasn't the, the guy who like wrote the track. I've still never met him. I never got to meet him. I, when I went to the studio in Copenhagen in Denmark, he, there was another, there was a producer there. There was another songwriter there. And then there was me. And so the three of us kind of collaborated on the project. I had brought the song that I had kind of mostly wrote and then we worked on it and went from there. So it was, it was really fun. It was really fun because it was it was uh, it was fun to work on a project of somebody's that wasn't even there. Uh, what was the inspiration for your new video? Uh, which which video are you talking about? Uh, <laughs> it's, it's you. Uh, it's it is it's live with you and a keyboard player. Oh, that one. Um, uh, I really like this. I really like piano, and I can't play it. And uh, so I just I really like collaborating with other people. Um, that guy who's playing it, he's actually uh, a producer of music in the city as well. And so before this kind of all went down, him and I were going to start working on um, some new music together. Uh, him being producing some stuff, but uh, we'll, we'll see now. We'll see how it goes or where it goes. Everyone's keeping to themselves. Uh, are you tired of washing your hands yet? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, um, I also work in a youth group home from time to time. So I work in a place where I basically I'm washing my hands every three minutes. I hear the secret is in the drying. If 
you don't want to get your hands all crazy. It's uh, don't don't take a rope and like rub it all around. Like just like pat dry to make sure that you're not like scraping the fabric apart across your skin. I, oh, there's a question down below. Yeah, uh, what we were gonna get? I was gonna get to that. Grace, okay. I don't know if I'm saying this right. Don't blame me, please. Grace, a significant. I don't know. Uh, what is the? She asked, "What is the largest crowd you have ever performed in front of?" Um, I haven't played any like very very big festivals. Um, I would say probably four thousand. I think maybe That's something like that. I have. I mean, there's some festivals out there where you're playing in front of you know thirty thirty plus. So those are some big big crowds. Uh, but I it's been I played some fun. So. Great. Oh, I'm sorry for. Pre I'm sorry. We, I, we get <laughs> we get the Iran with like the gender things. I we usually just say he, but it's kind of like it. It. We should start <laughs> saying it so we don't get the gender on. And I'm just like seriously. Uh, okay, that's a new you? rule. Always say it. <laughs> Did you have some festivals lined up for this summer before? Uh, yeah, there was. There was. I was in talks with a few, but it kind of, you know, didn't. It halted pretty quick. And everything. Um, we talked to uh, another, per, um, per, a person in OSAC, the organization in Regina, uh, mm -hmm. the music, and everything is getting moved to fall. So. Are there any festivals that you were really looking forward to? Uh, well, I mean, I think you always look forward to playing the, the stages that want you there. There's something awesome of it, of just playing in front of a, a crowd that is excited to hear you play, right? Um, it, yeah. so it doesn't It doesn't necessarily matter if it's, you know, a couple people or if it's a lot of people. If somebody is there and, and cares about what you do, that's a really big honor. Um, but there is one that is still currently going. I haven't announced it yet. Um, it's in September, and I'm excited to the possibility of being able to play, but I don't know that we will. It's kind of a, we'll see. So, uh, so Sony asked, would you perform in a football stadium or a baseball stadium? Sure. I know a lot of people who have sung national anthems for... Uh, for the Toronto Blue Jays or or done things like that. I mean the I mean there's I've got friends who've played it for an opening for the rider games or at halftime or different things. I my my music's pretty mellow though, so I, I don't know if they would want to bring me in and put people to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> pretty mellow. Yeah, I actually saw you I I I was with my dad and I saw you perform at the I forget what it's called. Uh the artisan, the artisan. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah, that place. It was really good. good. I like the artisan. They have a big, big fan in the roof. Yeah, with your brother and JJ Voss. Oh yeah, you went to that night. That's awesome. That was a good night. Yeah. That was uh, that was my brother's um, album release. Um, oh, do you have an EP, uh, Grace? Sorry, uh, it's the I, I I have two EPs. I have one that is barely, that you're barely able to find. <laughs> and I put that out really early, reluctantly. And I just put out a new one last, yeah. last March. So there's that EP. Yeah, uh, I what listened is, to that one. What is the weirdest review you've ever heard of your work? <laughs> uh, someone called me bro country, which <laughs> essentially means that I, I write country for the bros. So that my music is filled with references of uh, of you know skin tight jeans and dirt roads and I I wasn't I didn't know what to think about that it was like oh okay <laughs> yeah that is weird <laughs> I was just like what uh, yeah yeah they uh, they weren't they didn't go too easy on me that's for sure what is your connection to hockey. Uh, I grew up playing hockey, I think, like, pretty much everyone. Do you guys play hockey? I play hockey. I, I used to. 
But do you do you play road hockey? Do you ever just get the sticks and go out in the road? Yeah, we played street I, hockey. Before. We do we do that a lot. And my brother hit me in the stomach, and I had a bruiser for like. Two in weeks. in a video, I literally was like, yeah, we this played. was this is this is how the um our also, game Also, the went. loser team and had to get shot <laughs> with a ball. And okay. I was like, I was like um. This is uh, how the game went, and I meant to miss him and score, but I actually ended up hitting him. No, like, that right was here. after. Yeah, that was after, and <laughs> I just hit him right here, and that, I was like, "That that was how the game went." And after I was like, "Oh," and that made the cover of the um, video. The video suspending <laughs> our no violence rule. They, uh, uh, yeah, so. I- I grew up playing hockey, um, but I, I have this thing where, um, I mean, you can do it in lots of different ways, but I like figuring out how things work. I like trying to like break them down to their, their kind of core and just go, how is this kind of working? And it was actually a weird parallel when I was going to, when I was going to play for festivals, there would be people in the audience who would be watching me play. And they're looking to see my potential. They're looking to see, you know, can I put him on these lineups? Is he going to sell this many records? Like, they're trying to figure out who I am. And I found that there was a lot of parallels with that, with watching junior hockey. And so I started going to Regina Pats games. I started going watching the Brandon Wheat uh, Wheat Kings. I started to watch the Moose Jaw Warriors. I started to watch all these games. And I would see these these 15-year-olds turn 16, 16-year-olds turn 17. And then you just kind of get to imagine where they're going to be in the NHL. And I loved the idea of being somebody working for an NHL team and thinking, what is this kid going to be when they're four years, five years from now? And I just started to really like that process. So because I was traveling, uh, I wanted to see if I could get a pass to go to rinks that they would let me in for free. So if I was traveling all around Canada, I'd be able to just go to hockey games if I wanted to. And so I applied to a couple of different organizations and I started working for one. And one of the perks of working there is they give you a, a press pass. Huh. We've actually at a curling event we got a press pass before. Yeah. So here's so here's my CHL media press pass. Oh, um, it allows me to step into any uh, any rink in Canada, and just they let me in for free, and I can go up to the media press box if I want, and uh, and just watch the game for free. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Great, uh, Grace's. Suffolkant asks, have you <laughs> ever met uh, Katie Bella at Aiken? Uh I don't recognize the name offhand. Maybe I have, though. I'm really good with faces, not so good with names. Same thing with me. I'm good with names. Sometimes I don't even get my brother's own name. Like, uh, <laughs> who is the weirdest person you have... Uh, wait, who is the weirdest pe- person you've met through music? The weirdest? I <clears throat> I find, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I find that the weirdest people are oddly the most kind as well. So I've, fa- I've met some very, very, very strange people who let me stay at their house. <laughs> uh, I met a guy this last trip in, in on the east coast of Canada and he had seen <clears throat> he had seen this one band play like um like 60 times I think uh and his whole he had so much like just merch and stuff and like when we were there he sat us down and made us watch three hours of this band playing and he was like don't you see how they're just amazing and he was the nicest guy in the world but he was super super weird and I think sometimes let's go together Sony, asks, who is your favorite hockey team or any other sports team? Uh, my favorite hockey team is the Calgary Flames, for sure. I uh, I, I wasn't. I, I used to really like the Pittsburgh Penguins, uh, and that was that was my favorite team growing up. But I like the Pittsburgh Penguins. Actually, you still do. Well, I don't really follow hockey. I follow basketball. I like the Boston Celtics. They are the best. Yeah, growing up, I did like the Pittsburgh Penguins, but finally, well, like when I was younger, uh, I finally I have choose chose Vegas. He chose nice. Vegas. 
Vegas. That's a good choice. I I moved to Calgary right before they went on their playoff run, like a number of years ago. So uh, there was a I think a mutual friend of ours. His name was Greg Moore. He got me listening to games on the radio in like November when the team was still not very good, and so we used to listen to games together. And then I kind of they got a new goalie at the time, and then we kind of went on a run. But I. I got to see, I went to my first uh, NBA game this last year in January when I was down in New Orleans. It was New Orleans versus the Boston Celtics. He's a Boston Who Celtics. Who won? <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure New Orleans won by quite a bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> it was my first game. It was really fun. Wow. Uh, is Kelly McCrimmon the smartest man in hockey? Uh, I don't know. He seems okay. <laughs> I've never met the guy. Uh, he, I like, um, I, I find that he uses his connection to his old junior team really quite well. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but he'll draft a player from like overseas or from the United States. And all of a sudden, magically, they end up being drafted uh, to play for the Brandon Wheat Kings, which he used to manage. So he kind of just shoes his prospects over to that team and then he has a better understanding of their development and stuff. He's smart. He's a smart guy when he does that stuff. There's actually two former Wheat Kings on Vegas, which is his team. Um, <laughs> Ryan Reeves and Mark Stone. Mm-hmm. Chris, uh, Grace is suffocate act. Have you ever met Chris Jericho? I, if you're talking to me, Angel, I have. He told me to shut up. <laughs> yes, that's in an episode. We recently talked about him on our last interview with a uh, wrestler interviewer. Uh, have you ever met Chris Jericho, though? I I have not. How come he told you to shut up? Uh, I don't know. I I wasn't there, honestly. I was <laughs> sick. I literally well, I <gasps> came into the house after a, a very long field trip, and... I mean, like, uh, not field trip. Um, car ride. Car ride. And I literally just went into my bedroom and fell asleep, and I woke up next morning. I was like, what happened? So he did it. This is hilarious. He did it for a clickbait clip, which is hilarious. <laughs> okay. That was me. <laughs> I did not know it was clickbait. What's keeping you busy during isolation? Uh, I've been trying to write. I've been trying to watch a lot of hockey, too, like you guys are talking about that. Um, one of the things that a lot of people don't know, uh, one of my side things is I do really like hockey and I write for a, cop a couple of hockey scouting organizations, the ones that like profile players. So I've been watching a lot of hockey been trying to catch up on things. So I've been doing a little bit of songwriting, doing a little bit of that. I've also been kind of lazy. It's been good. I've been learning how to speak German. That's one thing oh, I've cool. been doing as well. So I've been doing my German lessons every day, trying to go for walks, making TikTok videos. I don't know, a little bit of everything. If you, if you do miss hockey, though, I can probably, like, uh, Dad, I could probably, uh, my dad could probably film some hockey clips of me and then send it to you, and then you can watch hockey! <laughs> awesome. Yeah, they, um, there's some leagues and stuff. So I, I've been watching some, like, junior Swedish leagues and some, and then some, like, old, old, old WHL games and stuff. So I watched Saskatoon Blades versus Brandon yesterday from, like, December. Oh, we actually went, so... Uh, yeah, we went, we saw this game, it was Regina versus Saskatoon with a cousin, and I forget, but it was overtime, and someone scored a, uh, one of the Regina Pats scored a goal, and his <clears throat> brother is in the NHL, and he scored the goal, which is pretty funny. Hmm. I'm trying to think of, okay, cool. It was like, no, this is what happened that made it funny. It was, so, me and him were like, me and my, uh, friend were, me and our cousin were like, uh, he missed a deke on the goaltender, and we are like, you have to redeem yourself, you have to redeem yourself, and then comes overtime, he shoots, and he scores. Was and this, was we, this for Saskatoon? Colton Dak. Yeah, so it was Colton Dak and Kirby is his brother, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Scored. No, yeah. I don't. Okay, this is getting very, very, very. Whatever. <laughs> we are messing up the 
this whole entire thing. That's it. <laughs> Hurts off. Any players the pet should patch. Any players the paths should keep an eye on on in the European draft. In the European draft for next year. Oh man, uh, yes. Um, I don't know any specific that they should keep their eye on, but I think they're going to get a decently high pick, and I do think that they're going to use it this year. So, do you guys do you guys know who their European players are that right now? No, no, I and I probably won't know. <laughs> so, like, do you know who played for them this year? Did you guys go watch some Pats games? Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. Yeah. So they they have defenseman Nikita set off who played as an 18-year-old this year. And then they have they brought a guy over named Jan Sickhart. They got him in the trade. So both of those players, I'm not too sure what they think. Sickhart's really big, and he's still kind of young. I think they might keep him uh, set off. I think they might release, but we'll see. But they'll, I think they'll use at least one or maybe two of the picks and try to get some other guys. Are you guys pumped uh, that they got the first overall pick this year? Probably, but I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, remember the backwards cycle skating? Oh! Oh, wait. You're taking me that. I didn't see that. I don't take my tests. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you guys something to get you guys hyped if you want to get really, really hyped. So. Uh, I'm pretty hyped. I ate a chocolate uh, cookie before. <laughs> I uh, grabbed a lunch. So when the WHL drafts players, they draft them when they're like 14, 15 years old. And that first season as a 15-year-old, they're not allowed to play in the WHL because they're just deemed that they're too young. They can play a few games at different times, but they're not allowed to. And in other leagues, there's been what's called like exceptional players where they've allowed players to play because they're so crazy good that they're like, they can play already. They're that good. And those players are players like Sidney Crosby. And, you know, those are guys who are getting exceptional status. Connor McDavid, I think. I don't know if he was, but these are the players. These are the players like Aaron Ekblad. These are players who are, who are they're already they're so good. And the WHL has never seen a player like that. They've never seen a player that good. This year, there's a player that good. He got exceptional status, and Regina picks first, and they've already said they're going to take him. And so, they're not only are they getting the first overall pick in any draft, they're getting the first ever player who's ever been deemed by the WHL to be good enough to play when they're 15. That's pretty good. Oh my god! Yes, his name. His name. <laughs> his name is Connor Bettered, and they haven't picked him yet, but they said they're going to, and he's phenomenal. So he's going to make I, I, Regina hockey really fun to watch. I just want to point this out because it's hilarious. Uh, Grace is suffering and said, "Uh oh, he's going into Rick Flair mode." <laughs> I don't even know what that means because I don't <laughs> much. Did you see Chase Pauls from Les Lethbridge this season? We know his dad. I think our dad knows his dad, but whatever. Chase Pauls? I don't remember the name, though. Did you see? He's a defenseman. So he just probably. Did you lives. watch Lethbridge this season? I did. I watched Lethbridge quite a bit. Oh. How, how old is he? Uh, dad. You wrote it right. 16. He is 16 years old. So a lot of the, a lot of times when I'm watching games and stuff, I don't. I tend to like get really tunnel vision, and I start. I try to watch the kids who are 17 and 18. Those are the kids who are going to be drafted. So sometimes I miss out on kind of paying attention to the 16 year olds, unless they just like blow me away. Yeah. Do you have any hobbies apart from music? I, and hockey. Uh, and hockey. <laughs> uh, I have tons. I I really like watching shows like. Um, what's what's it called? What's the one where they they go on the road and they try to like get antiques and like treasures from people? I don't know. Bid wars? Or something? No, not bid wars. Stuff like that. Yeah. Stuff uh, like. <laughs> uh, I really like I really, really like reading philosophy. I really like reading poetry books. Uh, I like playing cards with friends. Like I like playing poker with friends. Uh, yeah, I like being outside. Yeah, I love doing that too. I uh, love shooting basketball. I like shooting mini targets off of mat, like little little mini magnet targets <laughs> to my net, and it actually is really stressful. At oh, living. well, it gets stressful because you can't hit them. The show you're talking about is Storage Wars. I think so. Well, 
So there's Storage Wars. I really like Storage Wars. But then there's that other one. Uh, American Pickers is what it's called. So And there's Canadian Pickers as well. I like that stuff. I, I, I like the idea I saw, of just going and hunting for, for gems and treasures. I saw a question to me, I think, uh, uh, back then by our friend Sonny about hockey. Uh, how long have I been uh, – playing hockey i've been playing hockey since i was four because i couldn't play when i was three because i broke my arm <laughs> yeah he jumped off the couch i was like i was like calamunga and broke my arm it just snapped <laughs> Jeez, really weird but what's your favorite place in the world that you have visited Probably my favorite place in the world yes uh my favorite place in the world is edinburgh scotland Cool. I'm there's, he thinks there's, um, yeah, there's there's a place kind of downtown in in Edinburgh called Old Town, and it's basically all the like original stuff. So it's old stone, old big churches, big castles, big everything, and it's really really peaceful. You said you're going to Scotland? No, he's we Scottish. are part Scottish. I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, okay. Scottish. Yeah, I'm 25 percent Scottish too, so maybe it just comes out. Why is Edinburgh, Scotland, your favorite place? The, I I, yeah, I mean, the when I the first time I was there, I was only able to be there for like a day, and we didn't get to explore much. And the second time I was there, we didn't get to explore at all. So the last time I went in November, we got three days to explore. So I got to just walk around <laughs> and look at stuff and smell the air. And uh, I got some really cool pictures ne next to their huge, huge, huge castle. And I got to learn some of the more history about it too. That's cool. Yeah. If have you, you guys ever seen a have you ever seen a castle before? Yeah. Like nope. a true castle? <laughs> I don't think we ever I don't think uh I don't think we will see a castle. Does that mean cause you like Scotland, Edinburgh? Does that mean bagpipes on the next album? Oh why not? Let's do it. <laughs> Why not just a whole album of bagpipes? <laughs> yeah, just like bagpipes all the time. Bagpipes and mellow lyrics. Let's do it. <laughs> I'm actually, my teammate Matt plays the bagpipes, and I he think he even is joined in right now. <laughs> if you weren't a singer slash songwriter, what would you be? Um, the two things that have been really big constants in my life have been music in whatever form it shows and hockey. working, working with youth. No hockey, some kind of thing that comes along. So I, I've worked in some group homes. I've worked in some, um, some drop-in centers. I've worked in some places like that and I still do. And so those two are kind of constant. So when music kind of slides down, usually the other one slides up. And then when that one slides down, music slides up. So that's kind of how the balance has been. But right now it's like there's that third competitor. I don't know how to do it, but like there's a third competitor of hockey. Hockey's trying to find its way up in there too. So now we can't because all of the cancellations. Yeah. So But I can still watch old games, which is which is fun. You can watch it on YouTube. I mean, it's like it's slow it's kind of surviving, but it's not. Yeah. It has like five hearts left. <laughs> It's like in <laughs> Minecraft with the half heart left. Oh, whatever. It's it's. Something Do you have like any pets? I wish. I travel we too have... much. I don't. Uh, I'm not. I can't really take care of someone really well. I would love to have a cat that was really self sufficient and friendly when I came home, but it's just it's not a luxury I'm allowed to have. My brother has two dogs. My dad has two dogs, and so I kind of just live through them when I get to go see them. I have, we actually have four cats. What? Yeah. And we actually take a summer road trip every single time. But my mom does have friends that take take care of them. So, do, so. Uh, do the cats get along with each other? No. no. There's this one. <laughs> so Devin Haru travels a lot. I was going to say something. And he has host plants that somehow survive. Yeah. And Is this the question? What? Oh, do you have any house plants? <laughs> uh, I have one house plant, oh. and it has survived way longer than it should have, because I am not good at taking care of it. But it's survived. It's continuing on, 
it's grown. I was giving, I was given a succulent last summer, like something that would hopefully grow and everything else, and it didn't grow at all. So, <laughs> did you comb your hair? Nope. <laughs> I put this on. I love combing my hair. I never comb my hair. It's okay to not comb your hair on the show. This live. Was. <laughs> it's okay. I don't. I never comb my hair. I probably haven't done it for months. And I really Good. should. Comb. You probably should. You should probably brush your hair. I yeah. probably should. Yeah. Well, my His hair is uncombable. It's uncombable. <laughs> and that's not even a word, guys. How was it like at your Will Wildwood Artist Retreat? How was the cat? Oh, the cat. Um, I that cat is so independent. Um, you said the no. cat. The cat likes to chill in front of the the like the open fire. Because they have a they have a, like a, a wood fireplace in the house, so the cat likes to chill in front of that. Likes to sit on top of the one couch, um, but it's that's one of my favorite places to go in Canada. Actually, because what it is is it's friends of mine who are are live on an island off of Vancouver, and then they have in the attic they have tons of instruments and tons of places where you can go record. So you can go and kind of walk around and just see what the island life is like then write a song and then go record it if you want. And it's a nice little kind of getaway from, it's very, very different than Saskatchewan, that's for sure. That's so, why it's a, such uh, a good audio. Uh, like, I do not know what this means. If you know what this means, please put it in the comments. What does LMAO mean? Like laughing by off. Oh, <laughs> finally, after six years, we figured it out. What? I mean, like, we've probably have been using cats for six years. Um, no, cats. Oh, oh. So, people keep uh, on saying that. So, if, thank you for joining us today, Joel, and letting us into your home. Adios. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for having me. <laughs>